So the other day on the video that I made, also a response video, No Harmonic Waterfalls in Beethoven's Hammer Clavier and More and Whole Beat. If you show you the thumbnail, you know exactly, I think, what video I mean. There was a, there was a comment made by Musical Intentions, give it time, that, that rings true, very, very true for me, which is uh, very nice to read. But on, as a reply there, you know, unfolded a kind of chain, a chain of thoughts or comments that contained several points, I think, worth mentioning. And some of which also asked for my opinion or answer. So here I am doing that. I don't know how long this video will be. Try to be as concise as possible. But you know that that's, that's not one of my many qualities, I would say, being short. Um, having said all of that, let's dive into it right away. So Jim Clark asked, I've tried it for many years, so basically said in the video I listen, uh, certainly for no known music, it's very hard sometimes to just get used to the new result, to give it time, or just accept the performance that you like. It's nothing wrong with that. And Jim said, I've tried, tried it for many years, but I never got accustomed to these slow tempos. In the Hammerklavier Sonata, if the Hammerklavier Sonata had no metronome marks, Everyone, also women, Alberto would play it faster than half note 69, half note 138. He means faster than whole beat. Here in this comment, I will ask Wim, have you ever tried to find another solution for the very fast metronome marks than your whole beat theory? No, answer me and I will help you to find it. And now we wait. I mean, for the solution to come. I'm a little bit choking. Um, I'm happy to read any other solution and I'm also confident it will never come. Why? Because then you have to show me that people can play 25 notes a second. And this technical argument, I use that a lot and it freaks people out. But you cannot just say, okay, but we're not talking about that. Yes, we are talking about that. The speed, the number of notes per second is a secondary argument. So when I, when I, when I highlight pieces that are flat out impossible, um, and there are a lot. I mean, really in the range of like, no discussion. There are a lot. I mean, there is no discussion. There are a lot of, if we would extend that, that list to pieces that are highly problematic or only, you know, reachable, like after years of practice by the top, top, top level of, of pianists. And even then, like with a lot of compromises, like slowing down in the fastest uh, passages and so on, then the list would be enormous. Also slow movements, by the way. So, no, uh, if you have another solution, you have to first solve that. Some pieces, a, a large group of pieces, I once had, you remember, some people will remember that in the community tab, I shared every day an impossible metronome mark. The world was freaking out. Actually, I was losing subscribers based on that. Even people who didn't care about it got this message every day on my community tab. I mean, only happens when you are following everything that I publish. But anyways, I had to stop with that. People say, don't, please stop doing it. That's what it is. You have to solve the insolvable. So, but Jim, I'm waiting. And before we continue with this uh, chain of comments, there are some other passages here um, or comments here that are worth mentioning. But I mean, Concerning the tempo of the Hammerklavier Sonata, it's of course something you have to trust on my word when I say that, yes, I would play it slower. When I studied the Hammerklavier Sonata, it was before uh, Alberto literally knocked on my door. I don't remember if it was in the tempo of the Fifth Symphony or not. Maybe at the time, not yet. <laughs> Just joking. But I was preparing the Hammerklavier Sonata in awaitance of the Fritz Piano Forte. I already had the, Fre the Frenzel. So it was a new piece for me. And for me, the 138 felt very fast, very, very, very fast in whole beat. And I only later, when I dived a little bit into the history, saw that Beethoven actually considered the piece, this piece to be an allegro assai originally. So he crossed out the assai. And so editors or musicians like Marshallis, who write in his edition, like I give 138 for the quarter note here because I, I, I don't want to change the 138 as a number because it comes from Beethoven, but 138 for the half note, a mix of this piece, like a very fire, uh, I don't remember exactly this word, but like, 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 like it, it, it turns a piece into a really fast presto. 
and so he gives quarter note 138 some people believe that's 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 the uh, proof for um, for a variable use of the metronome which is i think completely besides the question but regardless of that my tempo was 116 before i knew that marshall's tempo was also 116 and i mean half uh, um, half note whole beat so you have to take me on my word you can also go to the to the recording that alberto made in 2000 um, 20 i believe um that's 75 minutes hammer clavier sonata where it's supposed to be some people were, were like clapping in the in, in 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 the comment like yeah you said it's 67 minutes and a half and a whole bit and now it's suddenly 75 huh? you proved yourself wrong well his hammer clavier sonata was a little bit too slow we f we find out later but hey we are pioneers on this and with a gigantic work like the Hammer Clavier Sonata, have you any idea if you miss the beat and the slow movement and whole beat on, on almost 28 minutes, then yeah, your recording will be a little bit too slow. But the beginning also, in the first movement, I think he slows down a little bit, like 200, I don't know, go ahead and check, 116 sometimes. So. He re-recorded, Alberto, I mean, the Hammer Clavier Sonata, really practiced with the metronome. We do that often, by the way. Uh, go and see our first podcast, you will see it. Or the second one, I don't know, we will talk about that. But it's just a matter of fact that these gigantic works, you have to familiarize yourself with the tempo. And now it's 67, 68 minutes around that, or I mean, around that. Uh, it's a little bit faster. So yes, we would go slower. I would go slower and apparently Alberto as well. At the end, and we had we should have a conversation about that in the podcast. It's very interesting because the Asai is crossed out by Beethoven. But when you take the 138 half note, it's still an Allegro Asai. It's really fast, but it works. The 116 works as well. So whenever we talk about differences in tempo, when you go from 138 to 116, the piece changes. And you can do that. You can do that when you play in 116, you would, I would say like, yeah, that is how Moscheles would play the piece. But Beethoven had 138. So if you want to honor Beethoven's opinion, you go to 138. But it feels fast to me, though it makes sense at the end. It made sense. It's just a world that at first we didn't discover right away. We thought it a little slower, not faster. So that's an answer to your question. It's, it, it's, it's not true. We wouldn't go faster. We would go slower. Um, then if I continue, um, it's not a theory, it's about facts. That's true. And that I think we, I stress it a lot. It's a practice. We bring into practice what we see as a solution. It's, it's so weird that people are sometimes freaking out on us, on the solution when we are showcasing it and they point to something that in general doesn't exist. Then Jeremy points out to uh, Jim that Alla Breves are around a half note for uh, for the uh, the second. That's that's perfectly uh, true, and that 69 half note is faster than that. And then you have the Alla Breve eighth note, 16 note. It's a little bit complex. Um, uh, also, the reason why Beethoven wrote Allegro Assai, that's just pretty simple to, to say why, but I will make another video of that. I all, already mentioned that in previous videos, I think even in the Alla Breve playlist or in the um, Hammer Clavier playlist, just go on the channel, click on the authentic sound uh, name and you come to the homepage and then you can go to playlist and you will find a playlist around the Hammer Clavier Sonata. Um, Jim asked, can Bim speak for himself? Yes, I can. Um, and then comes a discussion on my Bach performances, I believe, where the Jim points to, to a certain Martin. I have no idea because there is no Martin in this chain of, of, of reactions. Um, thank you for sharing them here. There are examples for sure where things get very slow. It, they talk about the chain metronomization of Bach, Walt, and Petit Clavier. It's there behind my back. It's the original edition. So Czerny, Metronomax, um, at the end, what the focus should become, I believe, is the understanding in which note value the music should be taken. 16th, 8th note, 4 of half. That's actually quite correct. I think that's that's a correct point. Sometimes, oftentimes, more and more towards the end of the 18th century and 19th century, 2, 4 is 4, 8. Go read about that. It's fascinating. So many of these fast, so-called fast, last movements of Mozart or Haydn sonatas sometimes Beethoven, um, they aren't 2-4, but they're actually 4-8. And so then the note value that you should take as to count is 4-8. Uh, is I will make 
a, a little series on the Ala a la Turca. I recorded that piece again in uh, Morseless whole beat, this 160 quarter notes, where Morseless says in the edition, in order to uh, play the ornaments right, the the player should be able to count one, two, three, four every bar. That is just an indicator of that you should play in eighth notes. So the why giving a metronome a quarter note 160 if actually you should talk, you should uh, count in eighth notes. And by the way, in in quarter note 160, try to do that. Count, count along out loud with your prayer playing in quarter note 160 while playing the Alla Turca. If you're able to play that in 160, I mean, some people will, can, will be able to do that. That's that's still doable, though it doesn't make sense. But that's that's another story. But then count in eight notes. Anyways, I'm digressing. So it's it's true that uh, that you have to decide where with whether and in box fugues sometimes it's eight eight. The structure, the harmonic density is so. So dense, you know, that and Cherny's metronomization certainly for the four four for the four voiced fugues is very slow in whole beat. He wants to give time to every harmonic exchange to be felt. If you ask me if if that's an 18th century practice that goes back to Bach, I would not know. I, the only thing I know is that Cherny did it on the piano like that. So it's interesting to. Uh, to uh, to do that. By the way, Jim, you mentioned here the C sharp minor fugue, um, quarter note fifty eight. I don't remember exactly what the metronome mark is, but that's a really slow fugue, and I would say that's like slower than I would have imagined a few years ago, um, because there you have an Alabreve fugue, which would be like around half note 60. Yes, that's true. Jenny gives actually half of that tempo if you take it in whole beat. But there is another option or not, not another option for him. When you play it on the clavichord, I feel it as a little bit too slow, but actually not too much. The only thing I can say like, okay, if I have to explain people why in a breve notation I play actually in quarter note single beat 60, then in half note, it would be because of the few type that's been played then so much slower around 1800 and that might be true but if you ask me if that's Bach intention I would say like a pure a la breve tempo regardless of the complexity and harmonic structure also doesn't work so Czerny might be very interesting um for the recording that I'm going to make, like I will start in a week now, date of recording of this seg segment is 6th of January. I don't know what tempo I'm going to take, but Czerny is definitely on the table as to... It's too fascinating to just see what the guy had in mind. I mean, these tempi came probably from Beethoven, if are not very close or influenced or inspired by Beethoven. So there is a lot to discover there. Um, Jeremy asked, like your point being, it's a little bit of another chapter here, but anyways... Um, Jim's point, Wim's feeling is significantly faster than played at half tempo 72 versus 58 in the C sharp minor fugue. I think he refers to the recording I made a few years ago. We may conclude from that that Wim theories is not watertight because even himself sometimes deviates considerably from that. That's absolutely nonsense. That's absolutely nonsense. I mean, I. I said, Czerny's metronomization of the world tempo the clavier is made for the forte piano in post Beethoven's time. It's very well possible that his tempi go back a, a far, a long time because he is giving hints in the introduction of the of the Bach edition, like, be aware, guys, tempi and Bach's time were much lower than we do today. So there is an historical notion there, and there is a connection to Beethoven, and we will do the, the World Tempi de Clavier on the Forte Piano. Actually, Alberto is going to do that. Not this year, in a few years, with the fingerings and all the articulation marks that Czerny gives on the Fritz. It will be fascinating, and then we will follow that tempo. But for Bach, it, Czerny is, for me, one of the very late sources just to be inspired on that. But if I don't follow Czerny's tempi, if I didn't even have the intention to look at those metronome marks in the first place, what was the case actually during the recording that I made a few years ago? What's the point? Saying that it proves that my theory, my theory is not watertight, is just complete and utter nonsense. I'm sorry to be so strong on that, but you have to be honest with yourself. It's not the same thing. But then we go further. 
Jim says here, yeah, Wim clearly says that follows his gut feeling here and not some barren and dry rule. That is to be commended in him. So every time I deviate from a from a metronome mark, even if it's a Czerny metronome mark given on Bach and I play on my clavichord, when I deviate, it's like, yeah, you show, you proved your theory is not correct. You, you don't follow your own rules. But by the way, I commend you for that because you don't follow dry rules like a metronome mark. I mean, he, he continues like, because the composers do not assume rigid rules when handing over the players their MM marks. With music, following your musical feeling is always better than rigidly following rules. Jim, when you were in the, in, in, in the work of finding an alternative solution for the metronome marks, which you promised me to do, I'm waiting for that. Explain me the sentence. When Beethoven marks the Hammerklavier Sonata with 138, he doesn't mean 138. Or what do you mean? He says, yeah, I'm giving metronome marks. But the reason I give metronome marks is for all players to follow their own musical instinct. And I would be fine with that. That's why he writes in 1826 to his to Schotz and Zöhne um, for the Messa Solemnis, don't publish yet, wait for my metronome marks. They are super important. The world cannot live without them anymore. My Ninth Symphony had a lot of success in Berlin, and that's because my metronome marks. The, the idea that the metronome mark is a dry, insignificant, stupid, like boring number, I don't get it. It's the most fascinating thing in the world. When Beethoven would play a concert tomorrow, and he would play the Hammerklavier Sonata, and you would be there, and I would be there or not, what would be my first, first question? What was his tempo? was also Beethoven's question to people who visited or to attended concerts with music uh, played, his music played by others. How was my, how was the tempo? He was super concerned about that. That's why they gave metronome marks. And so the notion that Beethoven would be fine with every deviation from that metronome mark is just, and um, how do you say that in English? It's, it's like a projection, you wish, because you have, a tempo in mind that doesn't correspond with that metronome mark. And so how easy is it to say like, yeah, he probably would be fine with that. But that's the, the reason he gave metronome marks, the reason Chopin gave metronome marks, the reason all these other people gave metronome marks is because of the fact that their music and their opinion sounded best at that speed. And if you're familiar with connecting a tempo to a performance, and I don't know if you're a musician or a pianist or whatever, but every professional musician knows that if you change your tempo, regardless what your tempo is, you change the composition. You have to adapt everything to articulation. Everything changes. Everything changes. So if that's true for a performing musician, how true is that for a, a for, 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 for a composer? The bottom thing, bottom line is, and I said it before, and I will repeat it a lot of times. When you go in to, to, uh, to, to something like this, when you say, okay, this guy presents a solution, what she calls a solution, but we're not going to accept it by default, not giving it a, a slightly chance, then nothing will happen. What happens is you will just be looking for little things here and there, whether it be historical sources, one sentence here, one little source there that you combine that are uncombinable, or you go and you watch all my videos and all the words that I've spoken and I speak way too much, and you will find things that say, hey, but this is inconsistent with that. He played the C sharp minor fugue there in 72 and Czerny gives 56, so your theory is not correct. I mean, if that's your input, and it's, it's a lot of people think like that that's not called research what what i hope to do here i mean dedicating part of my life i'm sitting here in my studio it's still holiday today uh, so i could be at home playing some music and playing some board games with my kids i don't do that make videos for you that's for a reason and i hope this uh, this this is a little bit more serious and just like this guy wants to promote something that's obviously not correct i mean you have to step back a little bit and say, okay, if met are metronome marks problematic or not? If they're not, then we have nothing to discuss. Discuss, And then you have to live with that idea. There will be a lot of moments in your life when you have to close your eyes and ears and certainly not check any recordings with the given metronome marks. Like Jim says, like metronome marks don't mean like rigidly following them. Yeah, you can tell that until you die, huh? Eh? to yourself, but it doesn't change the facts. The facts are that metronome marks are given as accurate tempo indications. You first have to be there 
be able to come there in order to reject them if you wish that's a personal decision but if you're not able to reach those you cannot say yeah we're not going to do any effort to come there we're climbing the mount everest and we're like just two kilometers no it's not possible 200 meters from the top you know what well it's not possible for you to come on the top just making this up we're going down and we, we we pretend as if we were there but because actual intention was to come here only that was a i mean it doesn't work like that you first have to be there on the top you have to pray to play that metronome mark and then you have the right to say okay now we talk it did Beethoven really meant to follow that my answer would be yes but if you keep telling that to yourself while as a deflective argument that's not how how you can participate in this in this research because it's not research it, it's just pouring over a biased opinion on something that's coherent but with something that is not coherent i mean i will stop talking because this video is getting way too long and um honestly i don't know guys i mean many of you will be still watching now um how you can keep up with me uh, talking so much i mean anya would say when she listens to these videos like you talk a lot and she knows that for a very long time and it's just a matter of fact i just want to be complete i'm not talking in my mother tongue i mean sometimes i think fortunately but because then these segments would be like 60 minutes instead of 30 but many of you are still watching now i see it in my stats so if i feel giving you detailed information i know you're looking for that and but i promise to be as concise and short as possible if that is of any help guys thank you for watching subscribing go on patreon support our work there we need that we're going to build an incredible library of music in the coming years and if you do that we see each other very soon again thanks for watching